Families have a lot going on. Let Ollie help manage the mental load with new cognitive health supplements for everyone four and up, like delicious Lolly Focus Pops or Lolly Mellow Pops for kids. And for parents, try three new Brainy Chews to help you focus, chill out, or get energized. Find these cognitive health buddies for the whole fam at ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Look, Bumble knows you're exhausted by dating. All the must not take yourself too seriously and 6-1 since that matters. And what do I even say other than hey? <sighs> well, that's why they're introducing an all new Bumble. With exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame, sex addiction is bad in Carta. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Indeed. Indeed. Especially bad before the internet was a thing. You had to work harder at it back then. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Which means you really had... Bad. Oh boy, mm-hmm. how you feeling there, Sesame? Uh, a little bit dis- disoriented. Yeah, I'm pretty depressed. Uh, it's true. Yeah, it's I'm a little bit dissociating a little bit. Yeah, so I was, you know, the the, the world is such a happy and good place to live in right now. So I. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, so so you know, I needed a movie to depress me. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> No, yeah, that th- I think it was the opposite. I think I needed a movie to pick me up from the depression of the world, but um, you know, oh, it depends oh. on <clears throat> what your mood is, right? Because like, yeah, I used to watch sometimes like horror stuff or zombie stuff, and like for some reason, like watching those movies would kind of like almost like regulate my mood in some weird way. Like, yeah, like I like it's almost like watching those movies would like kind of like absorb whatever feelings I was having into the movie, and therefore that would kind of give me like a clean slate yeah of mood if you will uh mm-hmm. but but also there's times too where you just like i want to watch you know community for the 80th time or news radio or spin city or what have you yeah those are your sh- but yeah. like you know, well, i know <laughs> yeah <clears throat> but it's it's you know the world is such a happy place where you have you know several genocides happening and uh you know presidential candidates that don't care about the actual people that live in the countries that they're running yeah. and um the uh Good stuff. You know, and 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 people that worship a presidential candidate like East Jesus and um <laughs> You know, things like that, yeah. you know, happening in the world. So everything's rosy. It's all butterflies and rainbows. And um, speaking of rainbows, if you're listening to this in June, happy pride. And um, the uh, at least we got that. Oh, you got so woke, man. You're so yeah. woke. I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I just turned off like, uh, you know, two people in our audience, maybe. Um, the uh, <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening to this show, honestly, and, and you do not support all people, you know, having the right to love one another or uh exist um fuck you and um <laughs> no yeah. no you're gonna turn off one of our like 558 listeners or whatever <laughs> no we, we need all of them <laughs> i just turned half our audience that one guy that listens to our show yeah. and watches newsmax when he's not i don't know but um the... or, or the guy who listen wait for our with, with bated breath for our advice yes you know in our advice portion of our channel well that was my advice oh okay this well, yeah, that's true i guess yeah, yeah okay. my, my, my advice is, is is if you're a bigot fuck you um and uh oh. maybe not be a bigot that's the best advice i can give awesome yeah and and speaking of people who uh are kind of bigoted and um misogynistic and sexist and um things of that nature well, um we watched a movie i guess you could call it a movie i mean <laughs> it was produced on film so 
Well, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's another thing. I don't know if that was film or video or what. I'm not sure what it was produced on because it was really um, bad quality. It looked like film, but maybe it was just like an effect that they yeah. used or something. Yeah, I don't know. This was made in 91, released in 92. Well, released at the end of 91. And yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, the film that we are covering today is a movie called <laughs> Even Hitler Had a Girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Which is an unrated um, 1992 film that's 138 minutes long. Oh my god! Really? Oh geez, I didn't realize. Not 100. I mean, no, an hour and 38 minutes, not 138. Oh, I was gonna yeah. say, I'm like, wow. Sorry, 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 I read that wrong. <laughs> I saw. I, I would just. Yeah. I would have not finished it if it was that long. I'd yeah. just be like, all right, I'm, I'm protesting. I'm not gonna watch the. Rest I mean, of this. It, it felt like it was 138 minutes long. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's a film directed by Ronnie Kramer, written by T.J. T.G. Baker and David Manning. Ronnie Kramer, the director, um, has directed like documentaries and other things. But uh, yeah, he directed this, and then I mean, he's known for Highway Amazon, September Sketchbook, eh? um, Black Street Jane, Mugs. Eh? Um, yeah. Mm. Anyways, he has a varied career. His latest project was a short film called Icons back in 2019. Oh. I do believe he's passed away, though. So, yeah, he passed away in 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, at the age of 64. Um, and T.G. Baker is only known for this in the sequel, The Hitler Tapes. <laughs> David Manny yeah. is known for this and The Hitler Tapes. <laughs> so, um, the film stars Andrin Scott as Marcus Templeton, and then, like, a million women who are scantily clad throughout the movie. I'm not going to name any yeah. of them because I don't know one that's more important than the other in the film, so... There's too many to count, so, you know... Yeah, I'm not trying to be sexist here or anything, but, yeah, the women literally are throughout the movie. We also have a guy named Jim Norton, not the comedian Jim Norton, but the... <laughs> He's a uh, Jim Norton is a uh, he's known for the movie Straw Dogs, Memories of Memoirs of an Invisible Man, Water for Elephants, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, hey. um, the TV series Cheaters, which is recent. Um, oh. He's got a uh, he was in Mary Poppins Returns, TV show Elementary, um, a lot of things. <laughs> Extremely loud and incredibly close. Midsummer Murders. Um, a lot of well-regarded things. He's in uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Really? Yeah. And he plays uh, he plays Marcus's father. <laughs> That's crazy. Who are you playing in Chamber? Oh, yeah. In Chamber, <clears throat> Chamber of Secrets, he was... Um, let's see here. Oh, he was also in American History X. Um, what? <laughs> yeah. He was, he played Mr. Mason in Chamber of Secrets. I'm not sure. Mm, what yeah, I'm not character. sure. Yeah, I'm not Probably sure. Probably like a smaller character, but he's in a lot of like prestigious films. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And in, in this Al movie, he's like an. He Albert Einstein on Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yeah. Uh, oh, like yeah. He was wow. This guy has been acting ever since 1965, and he's still acting today. Wow. It looks like um he has uh 123 acting credits on IMDb. And this is one of the yes. Oh my god, that's crazy. I mean, so, so I wonder somebody's, if... somebody's on a Harry Potter movie, Straw Dogs, and even Hitler had a girlfriend. <laughs> you know, it's just like what a very career. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if this was like a favor he did to someone. That's like, what I'm wondering. Like, hey, man, can you just be in this movie for me for like, I don't know, you get like 10 lines maybe? Yeah, I mean, they could have shot all, all <laughs> of his like... part in like an afternoon, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what, that's what it kind of seems like. So yeah, the short synopsis here on the Internet Movie Database is, this is the story of Marcus Templeton, a lonely security guard who blows all of his life savings on prostitutes because he is a total loser. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's that's pretty much the whole movie. I mean, you yeah. can just end it there. <laughs> yeah, under yeah, that, that that's that's the summary on the plots. That's the only plot summary that they have on IMDb. So yeah. So so what what was your reaction to this movie here, Sesame? God, uh just de disoriented, uh just kinda left me feeling depressed. Uh which I guess, you know, that was that was like the goal. It was kind of successful. Maybe maybe uh -huh. they that's what they were going for with, with this just making it really drawn out and just uh it kind of reminded me of Chick Boxer a little bit, but it was much better in yeah. some regards. Um, not so much better in other aspects of it. But uh, 
Yeah, I just I just kind of felt icky after watching it. I watched it in two cities. I watched half of it last night before I went to bed, which was not a good idea. Then I watched it a little bit, like, I don't know, a couple hours ago I watched it. Yeah. Hey. It, I watched it all last night and um, <laughs> before I went to bed, and I'm pretty sure it gave me nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It made yeah. me depressed. Makes you think about life. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess yeah. it probably was the point, but it's really weird. I mean, you've got uh, your main star, Jason Alexander wannabe. Um, <laughs> he just reminds me of Jason Alexander for some reason in his looks, but not his voice at all. But you know, just oh, yeah, voice. He looks like a I don't know Jason Alexander with more hair. Um, yeah, and a mustache. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so uh this is very typical of your I mean <clears throat> it was uh it was well regarded by certain people at the time that it came out. Um it was given by uh Joe Bob Briggs, the uh you know the the guy who shows like B movies and stuff like that. He he voted this the number one drive in movie of that year. Oh wow. Yeah. Maybe there was only one drive in movie that year. I don't know, but um <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, no. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. But basically, the <laughs> short synopsis is the movie. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's really not much. I mean, just like the details, I guess. But like, yeah, there's really no, there's no other, there's no B plots. There's no, there's really not much even like a history to go over of like why he is the way he is. Yeah. Other than the weird hallucinations where. Yeah, he has hallucinations his of his talking, father on the TV screen. To, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure if it's implied that his father is dead and he's like talking to him through that or, or, or what, you know, like, I don't really know what the implication is. The implication, like Dennis Reynolds would say, but like, <laughs> and in, in this case, it's actually a good um, analogy because of the whole sex worker stuff they've got going on. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, he, I mean, there's, there's really not much to it. He's a security guard. They kind of make him look like Hitler as a joke. He's got a mustache and he wears like a hat, you know, like. And, a, and lucky, luckily, though, it's not a it's it's not a little tramp uh, Charlie Chaplin mustache or anything. So, it's... no, it's not like that. No, they didn't go that far with it. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just like <clears throat> there's all these weird monologues he's doing because like he wants to be a writer, I guess. That's they sort of touch on that a little bit. <laughs> um, and. He goes through these little things like where he's just like it's just straight thoughts or whatever. Yeah, just I don't know. It's just ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, it, most of most of the movie is narrated through his like monologues. It's kind of like his thoughts in his head as we're going throughout the movie, which was a choice. Um, <laughs> and uh, even when he even when he's talking to people, it sounds like it sounds like the voices in his head because the way the audio is done, it's kind of interesting. Like it almost sounds like it was redubbed. But I can't tell. Like, yeah, I definitely got a few instances of that. Yeah, yeah, it. it uh, but yeah, it was it. It was an interesting choice. I mean, I, I don't know if I hate this movie. <laughs> it could have been uh -huh. better if it was done a little bit better, different. I mean, the main the main thing about it is is there's like okay, so it's there's way too much nudity in this movie. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's 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 excessive. It, it's gratuitous, and it's like the director just basically. I understand at this time of you know movies like this existed. It's just, but it's it's basically porn, not like hardcore or anything. But you know, it's like it because like basically what what happens here. So 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 what what happens in the movie basically? I mean to start off. <laughs> okay, we'll we we'll, we'll, we'll uh, down a little bit to brass tacks here. So Marcus, yeah, he plays a security guard. There's really not much going on at his job. He has to watch over other cars. I guess to make sure that no one breaks into the cars, but and he works, his cars. He works at night too, so yeah, yeah, he works at night, and his car is usually, <laughs> excuse me, the only one that's parked there. So he just kind of looks at his, you know, dirty rags, <laughs> you know, while at work and probably masturbates as well. Uh, he's yeah, he's definitely uh, he's addicted to porn. Uh, he eventually gets tired of that, so he gets the idea of like, what if I, you know, hired a sex worker or whatever, and just goes on forever where he's just like making like tons of phone calls to different like sex worker companies or whatever, which well, is weird because that, that, was that it is legal? Cool. first it starts out where he's just watching the, the X rated channel on this local cable. So yeah. Yeah. He's got that also too. He's a peeping Tom. So he's got that going on for him. And uh, <clears throat> he always goes to the same house and always watches the same two people naked or have sex. And it's like, how, <clears throat> Are they always naked? Like, does he just happen to show up at the right <laughs> time? You know what I mean? Or like, are they just always naked? Like, 
And well, what I think, you know, he, what I think happens is that they call him ahead of time. Oh, I see. So it's like a kink they got going on. We're like, they, they, they call him to be a peeping Tom, but then they act all front and chase after him. That's part of the, the yep. thing. <laughs> okay. It's just their kink. Yeah. Gotcha. So they, it's like, they, they, it's like all their kink together. That's kind of nice. It's like a, you know, it's like a, they, they're all in this together. It's, type it's of thing. A, no, a mutually but, beneficial relationship here. Yeah. 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 I, I like that. It's, no, it's, it's <laughs> really, it's really, it's really like cute and, and touching. Well, touching in a different manner, but like, and, and, and so the movie kind of begins, I think with him peeping through and then <clears throat> one of the people eventually sees him. The guy runs out to chase him, but he always ends up running away in time. This goes on like three different times though. It's like at a certain point, wouldn't you like have your window again? I guess you know, it might just be their kink because the only reason why that would keep happening so often is like if they just let it happen. Are you know? think, are you thinking but, um, about the cops or something? Yeah. It's something not just run out and then stay in your yard and just let the guy run away each time. And then and also too, when you get like a what's that? And that guy had had hair. He had great hair. <laughs> but no, I know he had like a huge like quaff, like yeah. a huge it looked like he was, he was very a nice hair metal band or something. Yeah, like a like Mel Gibson and Lethal Weapon type of hair. Yeah, like, but blonde. Um, like, not, not dark, but um, so he got he's done. He does that. He eventually he starts recording him with his camera, which is even more of a violation of privacy. Like, Jesus Christ, this guy's racking up misdemeanors yeah. and felonies. Like, you're, I mean, like he's his 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 deviance kind of develops where he starts out with the X rated stuff on TV. Then he moves into um calling up uh call girls and trying to bargain them down in price. I know that's the other thing too. It's like, dude. Like, that was the thing that actually made me the most mad at him, was that. Not all the other ones, the Peeping Tom stuff, obviously. But, like, where it's just like, dude, it's like, really? Like, yeah. you're trying to talk him down? Like, And then, um, I mean, I, I was waiting for him to start, you know, like, bartering. Like, well, I'll give you a chicken if you give me, yeah, I know. Like, give me a blowjob. I mean, uh, what, but uh, the, um, so, the... You know. The um so so he does that and when he when he starts having sex with these prostitutes he he get he has a he has like a little uh audio tape recorder so he thinks that he can relive the moment by listening to it and then eventually he, <laughs> eventually he buys a a camcorder and then he hides that to record the suscapades you know so it's a uh, yeah which is another violation <laughs> <laughs> huge violations of privacy and it, yeah totally um and but you know <clears throat> he's a deviant and the other thing too about this movie, this whole movie could have been avoided if he just went to therapy yeah. and just spent his money on that instead of, you know, all I mean, the sex workers and stuff. I mean, he even, clearly brings, he even brings that up at one point. He's like, you know, he's like, I could maybe I could go to therapy. I wonder how much that costs. Oh, I should probably just spend the money on prostitutes or whatever. So it's just like what the hell? No, no, you shouldn't actually. You should spend it on therapy because then yeah. you'll work through your issues and you won't have to like keep indulging in them and to the point where it's going to like really hurt you, potentially you and kill well, you at some point. It's it's a good commentary on how our health system sucks in this country. And um, mm -hmm. if, if we had affordable health care and mental health care, you know, maybe this guy wouldn't have had what happens to him at the end of the movie. So. Yeah, because these other aspects to him, too, that are not that bad. Like, for example, <clears throat> it's implied that he doesn't drink or even drink soda, uh, you know, so like, so it's like he has some aspect of disciplining, you know, or, or like living with discipline, you know, um, but just not when it comes to the areas of sex, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I just felt kind of bad for the guy in some, in some ways, but obviously, you know, some of his actions were just totally illegal i mean i'm all for but like it's it's like I, i'm trying to figure out what the commentary of this film is if, if, if it's a satire trying to point out the uh the um the like misogyny and bad behavior of uh of men of that type or something or what you know or like our society and how men are taught to be in society that leads them i mean it, it is kind of ahead of its time in a way too because it's basically like we live in this world right now where you have like i mean this guy's like the original incel um, yeah, pretty much but you know you know gets out of it obviously by having sex with prostitutes and stuff but it's like you know it, it, a lot of this might have been avoided if he had the internet but um but this is like 1991 92 so it's like before <clears throat> the internet really took off i mean this was you know of course you know years after al gore invented the internet but um yeah you know, you know. <laughs> that was before it became more commonplace you know and, uh, <laughs> 
he invented it, but only a few people were using that at that time. You know, <laughs> and that was before he he invented the Al Gore rhythm, and um, so yes. that also <laughs> the internet even more advanced. There's some would say actually not as advanced because the algorithm has ruined the internet well, in so mean, many the, ways. The, that's, the, that's the algorithm is what has led people to. I mean. Basically, this guy, I think, in modern times would be watching like Jordan Peterson or 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 uh, yeah. or what's that Tate guy? Um, Andrew Tate. And, yeah. Andrew Tate. I couldn't remember his first name. He'd be watching those type of things and uh, being basically convinced that women are evil and you know are just made for sex and whatever you know. But he kind of already feels that way. He would have been even worse. You know, he's so oh, yeah, because like so obsessed with yeah. women's bodies and breasts and stuff. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and he even makes one comment once about something when he's reading something about a woman being 190 pounds. And he's acting like, oh, my God, that's so, you know, it's just like, wow. Plus, that's also like an indication of how how more obese people have become in America since that time. Where at that time, 190 pounds was seen as like huge you know what i mean well like the other thing is like he's like about 200 pounds and he's acting like 190 is bad but i mean still i understand yeah i guess you know women and men have different beauty standards or whatever of the times but yeah just um but he's not even really in that bad of shape per se you know it's like he's a little overweight but it's like i think i'm more overweight than he is so it's like i don't know but I am older than mainly this, but oh. and <laughs> yeah, he's just mainly depressed. He doesn't have any confidence, so he just kind of walks around and and that's the other thing too is like he just he he's just like shy and he doesn't really know how to talk to people he doesn't even really have a friend he even said at one point he's like maybe i should call dave dave's my best friend and he's like no he's really actually not that great of a friend i probably shouldn't tell him my personal problems and he's like yeah he probably actually hates me <laughs> it's yeah. like okay we went from best friend to acquaintance to he hates me he like yeah well it, that's and that's I, yeah. I I know I've been I've been in those situations in my life where I was really depressed and I was like who can I reach out to oh um this this person will talk to me oh wait but I might annoy them um yeah that's oh, uh... in my head you know and it's like oh and then eventually I just don't talk to anybody or I do and then it's just the same person over and over again and then I do depress them and um <laughs> you know so I, I I've learned from that and grown in my life but um it's also the fact that. You know, I think that this is like a precursor to what a lot of things, the issues that we have in the world and problems that we have where men are into this manosphere or whatever it is, where they think they're, uh, they, they think one way and they think that, you know, no woman will ever love them or anything. And they don't take time to actually treat women like they're actually human beings and they still treat them like objects. And they think that all women are evil and not to get them or something, you know, and it's like, and then it's only jerks that get women, you know, sort of thing when, no, there's a lot of good men out there that get women and, you know, and there's a lot of good women out there that, just don't want to be with you because you're a jerk, you know? So, or, or it just, they just, or it doesn't even have to be that. It just be, they just don't like you for whatever reason. Yeah. And like that, that's another lesson to learn too, is that it doesn't mean that you did something wrong or yeah. that there's something wrong. With you was just that for whatever reason, uh, it just doesn't, just doesn't go well together, you know, or whatever. It just, that's not a right fit, you know? I mean, I know and, it's, but hard yeah, for, so he was kind of, I was gonna say, it's hard, it's hard for a lot of people to, to like, uh, figure out that, you know, just because you like someone doesn't mean that they're going to like you, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But anyways, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say like, he was like kind of halfway there with the incel vibe, like you said, but pre-internet. So yeah. he kind of, he didn't cross over into the hatred aspect. He was just kind of stuck in the depressed middle aspect of like, before you get into the rage mode where you're like, women are the gatekeepers of yeah. sex. And then, you know, like, like these weird things that people, like people literally say weird shit like that. I, I remember having to read on the manosphere because I was writing an article about it. Yeah. And so I had to go, I had to go read these websites or these articles from these different people. And man, I was just getting super depressed reading through the articles because it was just like, I was like, you guys really believe this stuff? Like, like, man, like I would just feel so disempowered, <clears throat> you know, if I actually believed that like there was just like no chance, no nothing, like, Okay, so what do you do at that point? And, you either just become a psycho and kill women like that one dude did. 
the Ellie Roger, whatever his name was. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the, or the most, yeah. most of the, I was gonna say most of these people like Andrew Tate and whatnot, don't even believe, I think half the shit they say, they're just doing it. Oh, no, they know it gets them clicks. And, uh, I mean, cause there was like, uh, I don't even remember, I don't know which one it is and I don't give a shit about all these manosphere guys, but there was like a guy at a baseball game and this little, like looked like 12 year old kid came up to me. He's like, I love you. Women suck, you know, or whatever, or, like fuck women. Oh, right. You know? And, and it's like, and then the dude had to like, kind of had this look on his face. Like he had to try to like reevaluate what he was doing with his fucking life. I don't know if it changed him or not, but still it's like, he, probably not, but probably, like, probably not. He probably just realized, oh wait, now I got younger fans. So I should probably be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think it is. I think it's Sneeko was his name or something like that. Yeah. Um, some bullshit idiot, like Twitch streamer asshole. I hate these people. But like, yeah, yeah. there's this good thing. This guy didn't have the internet because he would have just like totally went in the other side. But I, I just kind of felt bad for him because he's like obviously depressed. He had nothing going on in his life. He lived like in a shitty apartment. Didn't really have any hobbies except for writing. But usually his writing was just the weird shit he was talking about you know there was really hey you didn't even didn't have any friends away and yeah 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 had no friends works late shift so he pretty much doesn't have anyone to talk to at work so he's just kind of by himself even at work just watching for intruders you know or whatever not a good life you know to no. have and and so that he's got this sex addiction on top of that which you know not faulting them for that because people have addictions to all kinds of things and it just yeah. for whatever reason for him it just happened to be you know sexual deviancy i mean it could have been drinking it could have been like you know coke heroin whatever but it just happened to be <laughs> that you know so but instead of getting help like you know he could have because he had the money apparently but he just didn't want to spend it on that he was, you know be quote-unquote boring it's like yeah Maybe at first, but then eventually you would like to be a happier person and, you know, you'd build more confidence. Then, you know, you actually could talk to a woman in a normal manner and actually go on a date with her and then, you know, she'll want to go on a date again with you. Because apparently he had been on a few dates, but none of them went well, but he thought they went well. Yeah, I mean, but, they, you know, they even uh, show him on this one date where his aunt set him up with this girl that goes to uh that that uh he goes that she goes to a church with the mother of this girl and you know she's yeah. like I, I i don't believe in sex before marriage and his response to that is like you know can i touch your breasts you know stuff like that it's just like yeah, yeah. just be a sex pest i mean uh, like it, it, like maybe yeah, that's maybe, what he would... maybe talk to the woman and get to know her you know sort of thing it's like I mean, he just doesn't know how to talk to, to women or, or anyone, it seems like, really. I mean, yeah. uh, he just, he's very, again, he's very shy. He doesn't have any confidence and stuff like that. You know, he doesn't have any hobbies because she was trying to ask him, you know, questions about, you know, to get him to talk about things. And he would just be like, oh, you know, like, and then he just ends it after that. And I'm like, well, she's kind of giving you an opportunity to actually talk about yourself, you know, or the things that you're interested in. And you don't even really explain why you're interested you know yeah you um, scare her so, away basically and so it's like i mean I'm, I'm at the point in my life where if i went on a date i probably wouldn't even think about like sex or anything i mean i'm not saying i wouldn't think about it at all but i'm just saying like i would totally be okay with just talking about shit you know yeah and like not not have not have sex at the end of the day be like the goal or whatever necessarily yeah but just like to to just basically experience the moment as it's happening, like not not anticipating something after, but like focus on the actual moment at hand, which yeah. you know a lot of guys just seem like they can't do or something like that. Well, I mean, then again, and, I... and it's just like we we we've basically uh, um, gamified the whole idea of dating with dating apps, anyways, where you're just like swiping left or right on somebody and uh, you know deciding if you like them based on like a, a little picture on your phone, you know. So it's like it's just sad. <laughs> Or you got quote unquote e harmony, which is also yeah. bullshit. Because I have a friend, <clears throat> I have a friend who paid for that for I don't know six months or something like that. They they said, oh, we we'll guarantee you find someone in three months or whatever, and all this stuff. And you know, we we had this weird algorithm where we find all these weird things where we find out who you're compatible with the most or whatever. And <clears throat> he he couldn't find a date within like you couldn't find a single date within three months this this thing advertised that people were like finding lifelong relationships within that three month time span and he couldn't even get a single date within that time span and then yeah. he finally did and it was some woman 
who he barely had anything in common with. Like, for example, she was like hardcore sports fan. He's not into sports, so I'm not even sure how that happened in the algorithm. And like, and like, she wanted to go to like a baseball game or something with them. And he was just like, okay, I guess I'll go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't even like, yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes opposites can attract, but it just depends on personality and stuff. But still, it's like we, but in society too, with the internet not helping at all, where we've actually kind of uh, limited the whole idea of there's no third space where you know you don't you, you basically just have work and you have home there's people yeah. aren't, people aren't i mean hanging out at cafes as much and places and stuff like that i mean i'm starting to do that more often myself i walk down to a cafe and just kind of hang out and write and stuff but it's just you know but i never talk to anybody half the time i'm just sitting there and i'm left alone by myself drinking a cup of coffee you know so it's like you never know what's going to happen but um you know but if you don't put yourself out there you're never going to meet anybody but it's yeah. Still, it's not made easy though because everybody's in their own little world. Because you go to a cafe and everybody's on their phone, right? You know, they're 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 still online. They're just not at home online. You know, people are online whether it's at home or at church or at the grocery store or whatever. You know, you're always on your phone. It's just so stupid, right? But and each of those people are, are invested in their own little subculture within the internet. Yeah, and so there's there is no like relatability anymore. Like I was talking to uh, <clears throat> one of our mutual friends about this. <laughs> the other day because he was talking about when he was younger there was like a ice cream like cafe kind of place and um i forgot when where he was living at but like it was like on the corner of a street yeah and so people would like you know drive by and they park you know their car like in the back parking lot whatever and a lot of people would go there and I, i'm kind of made the point i was like saying like i think that's kind of the reason why people don't really do because like now everything's like plazas like you gotta so it's like and even when you're in the building, you're separated from the street. And so that that's like an extra layer of isolation. You know what I mean? And I don't know. It's just like and people don't live like people don't live in neighborhoods anymore either. It's like you you yeah. live you live in a city, but it's like, oh, you know, there's no neighborhood grocery store. I'm gonna drive, you know, a few miles to Walmart to buy my stuff or to Kroger or whatever. Right. It's not like there's a corner grocery store where everybody knows your name sort of thing or a or a, even a corner bar or anything like that. It's just all so like just like dissipated out like where you just kind of have to do everything and there's no like there's not a lot of i mean there are some you know local businesses but a lot of places you don't even have as many local businesses it's like oh burger king mcdonald's taco bell burger king mcdonald's taco bell walmart you know it's just like yeah it's, it's all corporatized yeah and i remember too i was i was when i was <clears throat> working at this place doing deliveries i would sometimes go into um forgot what area it was but they were uh it was like a trailer not a trailer park but it was kind of like uh i guess it was like a trailer park i'm not sure exactly what it was but like they had like a, a sign out in front to entice people to move there yeah and the sign was just like this nasty it just was not artistic at all it just looked really yeah. like just i don't know just looking at the sign just made me feel depressed, basically. Mm -hmm. And the sign basically said, like, <clears throat> McDonald's and Walmart nearby. And, like, that was, like, the selling point to live there. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's depressing. Like, I mean, I know it's funny, but at the same time, I'm like, no, wow, no. like, that is just but depressing. If, like, if that's your selling point, that could be said anywhere almost because there's a McDonald's and a Walmart probably within driving distance of almost anybody listening to this podcast in the United States right now, you know? So it's just, yeah. well, there's a little bit further out, like in the boonies. So oh, I think that's why they are. Yeah. <clears throat> advertising, like it's not that far, you know, type of thing, but it's just like, it just, I don't know. It, just, it sucks when there's smaller towns that could have a lot of like local businesses, but then you do have something like Walmart move in and basically kill all of your smaller businesses that Walmart has under their roof. You know, yeah, and now you've got um, what was it? Rain Wilson had. I know we're kind of veering off a little bit here, but that's yeah, but it makes I think it's I think it's related because this movie really is about isolation. It when is. You think about it, like that's that's the whole. I mean, honestly, main, like, honestly, this movie was kind of ahead of its time in a way. So yeah, no, it is. It's it's like it's pretty much just just about isolation. And how that breeds unhealthy habits. And yet, in this case, just happened to be about sex. Because, like, he didn't drink pop. He didn't drink alcohol. It didn't seem like he ate a whole lot. Like, he had, you know, sandwiches and shit. So, it's like, that was, like, his one vice was that one thing, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. And he just spent all of his money on that one vice. Because you could almost see the progression, too. Because, like, when he first gets the idea, he's like, oh, I'll, I'll do this once a month, you know? And then it's, like, every day. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. He's 
like, I can afford this once a month. I could just call a sex worker and we can hook up. And which again, I don't really think there's anything wrong with that. Like on the subtitles, it actually said sex worker. But I'm thinking that was like a new <laughs> subtitle. Cause I think back then they were probably just called prostitute. You I'm know, sure, I'm like, sure this movie yeah. was only recently subtitled too, because I don't think it's, yeah. you know, been <clears throat> wildly available before this, you know? Yeah. And so like, you know, I don't have anything to hold anything against that because no. like, I would think it's just like any other form of an occupation. And like, I know there's this weird stigma to it, but like, I don't really see what the stigma is because it's just like, oh, well, you know, if someone can't get laid, then that means they got to hire a prostitute. <laughs> It's like, but doesn't like, isn't a lot of services like that where like, if you can't do something, that's why you hire someone to do that thing for well, you they, or they, with they you? They say it's the oldest so, profession, like, which is not true though, because there has to be a profession before it where you make some kind of well, yeah. way to pay somebody to do that because you right. be a hunter or a gatherer or something to be able to give them some fur or some uh, food or something to pay for the sex. So I'm just saying... <laughs> Well, yeah, but I'm just saying too, like, there's nothing wrong with no. being a sex worker or paying for sex. And just in my personal opinion, because it's like, yeah, it's a service. And if someone like, let's say, and it's not just like, let's say like a quote unquote loser or whatever. Yeah, but get a date, if, you, if you just rely on that as an addiction, then I think there's the issue. It's more of an addiction aspect, you know, but if it's it, in an, in and of itself, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, that was the point I was, yeah, I was thinking yeah. it was just like, <laughs> you know, because like, let's say, you know, there's people out there who like maybe have like severe physical deformities that <laughs> other people don't find attractive. So does that mean that that person just is not allowed to ever experience the joys of sex? You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, there's all kinds of like, you know, reasons why someone would need the services of a sex worker and yeah. why someone would be the person to deliver those services. You know what I mean? And so it's like, because a lot of people too are like, oh, well, they must be so depressed if that's what they do all day. And it's like, but maybe they like doing that or maybe they yeah. like making people happy who otherwise wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to have that experience. So like, that's actually something that brings them joy is knowing that like, oh, this person was probably never going to be able to have sex at all and so i'm the one who shared that experience with them like it's not just like i don't know people just have like these very puritanical like ideas about that kind of stuff where it's like either the person's a loser because they can't have sex or the person who provides the service is like that's the only thing that they could do or whatever it's like you don't know that you're just yeah. making all kinds of judgments based off of like zero knowledge you know yeah i mean it's what it is you know so it's like you can't, yeah you can't you know it, it, everybody's life is different and whatever you know whatever makes the world go round. um yeah i'm not one to judge that but back to the plot of this movie <laughs> okay so towards the end this is the only major thing that happens in the movie yeah it's towards the end he uh or at the end um he hires a prostitute she finds the camera that he has there and she pulls mm. a gun out of her purse and then shoots him in the head and steals his hat yeah and tape recorder yeah no that's not the start of the video recorder yeah uh, so yeah and somehow there was a sequel i don't know i didn't watch it yet totally so yeah I don't so know. yeah he didn't die evidently i guess because he got shot in the head maybe he got shot right in the part where it didn't kill him so it just kind of like knocked him out yeah which is also really sad is that so there's like these like weird little like sub not really subplots but they're like kind of reminds me of robocop when they have like these commercials within the yeah. movie itself <clears throat> and um and they kind of had this where it was like some lotion that was supposed to make you lose weight yeah. for some reason i guess and so he, he eventually caved in and, and bought some because he was kind of sus suspicious at first you know and then he ends up taking some and starts rubbing it on his belly as he's like dying from the gun shot yeah. wound i'm like why would you need to lose weight right before you die <laughs> like i don't i mean you're I gonna get you're gonna probably lose some after you die anyway so i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then he wants to lose more quickly i don't know yeah and then uh and so you had you had that kind of thing going on which i thought was kind of funny the the weird i forgot what it was like it's just as safe as any garden vegetable is or i'm like well not all vegetables are safe necessarily and it's like <laughs> they're not every plant is safe rather um you have no idea what they put in that stuff and he's rubbing it all over his body <laughs> um i don't know yeah it just um uh, there was something else i was gonna say i forgot what it was but there was like yeah 
like you mentioned earlier about like just way too much nudity. Like these scenes would just go on for minutes. Yeah, I mean like, they, they had women women dancing on the on the screen and for like two straight minutes or yeah, more. Like probably like five in some of the cases. I swear it was just like at least it felt like it, it felt like it. yeah yeah. I don't know. It's just and that's the weird thing about this movie because like this movie the context of it or whatever actually made me feel really uncomfortable watching these women dance naked and like oh yeah why am I why am I not being turned on by this it's because the whole context of the movie is just so depressing <laughs> yeah, like, maybe you know? maybe that was the point to try to <laughs> maybe, yeah i was like i was like turn it off please i don't want to see this right now <laughs> like, you know? yeah. and uh i mean maybe, s- maybe it's like a secret anti-porn movie that like breaks porn addiction and you watch this movie and then, <laughs> like it, it could be i mean um yeah in, in in a sadder note though um uh the arden um what is the name arden uh arden scott the uh the star of the movie hey. he um he was uh sadly um working at a as a clerk at a denver area 7-eleven and he was shot and killed during a robbery before the sequel to this movie came out so in 1994 yeah. he he died at the age of 37 on March 25th. Um, yeah. So that's kind of depressing too. So the whole, this whole thing, everything about this movie is depressing. It's a way it looks that even the film quality makes it look kind of depressing. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, it kind of, of dark. The, the film quality like, kind of gives it a dreamy sort of, it does like a yeah. mirror effect or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It really, it's, it's one of these movies that I can't decide if I hate it or liked, you know? So it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely did not. I mean, I wouldn't watch this a second time. No, probably. But like, you know, I mean, I did say I hated it last night, but that was just because I was yeah. just getting really bored with it, and I just wanted it to end. Because again, they see it's like with Chick Boxer. Like, they, they, it's probably because they didn't have enough material, so they had to like stretch out whatever they yeah. had in order to make a full length movie. Although Chick Boxer is much bigger culprit on that front because that movie is only an hour long, and only about twenty minutes of that movie is actual Plot. stuff going on. Yeah, like, you know, everything else is like a. 18 minute long karate class where yeah it was all a bunch of padding in that movie and yeah in this movie too um it just no it's pun not as a, yeah well yeah no pun pad yeah <laughs> and uh but at least this one looked like it was made on film and not just the regular yeah. vhs chick box but um but similar style kind of mm-hmm. 1991 or 90 so it's around the same year yeah independent film that's trying to be edgy it's i don't know it seems kind of very similar i think they both that. have a cult following so it's it makes sense I do it's so I wonder you know if there's just something that was in the air at the time where it was like a like a like a not a, not a meme with the, like a zeitgeist type yeah. of thing where everybody was just kind of having like similar ideas at the same mm-hmm. time without really having like knowledge of what yeah. anyone else was doing it happens like with music and, and stuff I, mean, too. I, it's I, like... I, I feel i mean in certain ways i kind of feel like uh like there's like there's elements of like richard linkletter or early kevin smith in this too like in certain ways like um, yeah it, it's just interesting like like slacker or uh clerks and stuff like that too so it or even uh or even robert rodriguez to a point you know it's just like it's hard to you know, right around they were they were all made right around the same era, so it's kind of interesting and all made for like nothing. So yeah, yeah, like just very low budget. Um, I mean, God, they probably paid most of the money that Jim Jordan guy, whatever his name was. Um, no, not yeah. Jim Jordan. Sorry, uh, uh, Jim Norton. I'm sorry, Jim Jordan is the dude from uh the Ohio guy, right? The senator, whatever. It is. Oh yeah, um, yeah. The the sex pest or whatever the yeah. I would know that's the he's he Jim Jordan's a, he's a senator or whatever. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he, he um yeah he's what a, was he he's, he looked the other way right for something like oh he he looked the other way in some uh, sexual harassment um allegations uh, from Ohio State and stuff so yeah I, oh, right yeah. Right, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, any final thoughts here on this? No, feel free to edit some of this because it's... Um, well, no, I, I, th- yeah. I, think, I think what we talked about is good, and I think that people might actually get something from what we said. Um, if you have any thoughts on this, uh, please uh, comment um, wherever you're listening to this. Um, also, uh, you know, check out uh, alltoreal2.com for all of our information to our tea public, our social media, our um, Patreon, stuff of that nature. Um, it would help us out a lot. Just, you know, don't be a voyeur and go up to people's windows and yell in that they should listen to the podcast though, because that'd be creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not only creepy, it's against the law because you're, you're invading someone else's property and privacy. It'd be the weirdest way to advertise. Um, I would not recommend it. No. Like, Hey, go go listen to this podcast, you know? (laughs) 
<laughs> everybody's got a podcast these days so why don't you listen to this one and i'm gonna make sure you do by going to your window and like <laughs> maybe put some uh flyers under the door like in this movie there's actually a bunch of religious flyers oh, yeah. that end up underneath the door that was never resolved and we never found out who was leaving them so it was... it's right because there was a whole thing where he was he had, he called up the cable provider to ask them if they had like a list of subscribers who subscribe to the the porn channel yeah and then she's like oh it's all confident because he was like getting all paranoid about who might know if he's like watching all these movies out there, yeah. you know, and he's like, is my window open or can people see through here or, yeah. or can they hear me ever? And like, yeah, someone's always sliding these religious um, pamphlets underneath the door. And a few times he was trying to stay up all night to see who did it, but he always ended up falling asleep. Falling yeah. Asleep or all, all day, afterwards. I should say, you should say. Or all day, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, yes. or yeah. Sorry. All day. If he goes to sleep in the morning. Yeah. And I, that's just depressing all of itself. Third shift is just the depressing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's horrible. I worked third shift for 13 years. So I, uh, it, it's, it, I'd be like, I just think that would be totally ruined my, I, I honestly think that working third shift for 13 years ruined my life. So I'll tell you that I, I'd have been a hey, completely different person, I think. But, uh, yeah. I say so. I mean, it's just, it's so, it's alienating. Yeah. I mean, I was always staying up late at night. So I'd come over and hang out with you at like two in the morning and shit like that. Yeah. But like, oh, that was pretty much it, probably. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. It's hard. <clears throat> it's hard to have a life when you're asleep when everybody else is awake and vice versa. Right. But, anyways, um, I think that's about all I have to say on this movie. <laughs> um yeah I'm, I'm good yeah there really uh, wasn't a off of but so um you know folks uh just remember that i love you marcus templeton loves sex way too much sesame loves you and until next time bye bye thanks for listening to all too real two podcast a cullen park production produced and edited by michael e cullen the second Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.